and that's using the springs from mesh object. And again, this one is a kind of um, a prepackaged utility. It's really useful. If you put your mouse over, you'll see that it's a cluster. If you wanted to, you could open it up and examine how Daniel has set up um, the object so that it um, creates the springs for us with uh, minimal inputs. So I'll discard this and close because I don't want to change it. Put my mesh into um, the first input, and now I'm going to give it a factor for my rest length. And let's use our, uh, our trick here um, to create a slider very quickly. We want it to be somewhere between uh, 0.01, less than 1, less than 2. Right? What that does is this is a multiplication factor, not a rest length, but a rest length factor. So I'll call this RL factor. Right? So it will multiply the length by 1 in this case, or if you bring this down, it will be smaller. All right. So now we have a series of springs, right? Um, and we can start to uh, build out the uh, physics engine, right? So as we've been doing before, we'll just drop in the kangaroo physics object. Um, we'll grab our Boolean toggle. And again, you can copy and paste this from the other file if you like. We'll just keep building it out once more so that uh, we get into uh, the habit of doing it. So I'm going to plug this into my simulation reset, grab my timer, change the interval. Remember these are my simulation controls. All right. And the next thing we wanted to do was grab our merge from sets tree merge. This is our all force objects. Remember that we want to flatten the output of this. All right, so we can bring in our springs and connect this to the force objects. All right, so um, everything looks good thus far. If I turn the preview of this off here and release my that's interesting. Um, and I release my timer block. Right, we can see something happens, but probably not what we expected. Our uh, mesh kind of crumples up into a little shape, which might be interesting, but not what we're after. So what's the key factor that we're missing? We want to relax this mesh and create a minimal surface based on these edges. So what input are we missing in order to um, guarantee that our mesh stays connected to its original edge. All right, well done. You guys already have the answer. It's anchor points. All right, so again, um, we could try and go and find uh, all of the anchors around the edge of this mesh. Um, but again, these, these utility objects are extremely useful in that regard. If we go to the back to the utility tab under Kangaroo, you'll see that we have um, a couple of very interesting options mesh corners, as well as naked vertices, right? So if we grab both of those, we can drop them into the um, canvas here, and we can try both cases, right? One is going to take the corners, which would be like this point, this point, and this point. The other is going to take all of the naked edges, which means that um, that edge and the corresponding vertices don't have a face on more than one side, right? So we'll take our mesh and connect them up here. Let's start with just the naked points as our anchors. And let's go ahead and see what our simulation does. Turn some previews off, and we've got some points in space, and it looks like we're getting a minimal surface if I pan around and rotate around and see what we get. But that's not actually what we want. We want a mesh as a result, right? We want to see this mesh. So again, we're going to use our trick uh, for sending some information through uh, via the geometry input. All right? And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take our mesh apart and find all of the vertices. Right? If we go to Mesh Analysis Decompose, 
we're going to take our subdivided mesh into the input here, turn the preview off. All of my vertices are going to go through the geometry input. Then afterwards, I'm going to recompose my mesh. That's going to be from mesh primitive mesh, geometry out. And the, it needs the face commands in order to actually construct the mesh. So we'll just share the, the faces from before to the mesh that's being constructed after. All right, so now if we go ahead and release our timer block, we can see our mesh relax. Right, so now we have a minimal surface mesh based on the edge constraints that we've uh, created. And again, this is live. So if I wanted to turn on my, um, my control points and start to work with this, I want to sculpt it, or I want to see what happens if I start to move my inputs around, you'll see that sometimes it goes past a limit. So you just need to reset and then start again. You can see a different result from uh, that manipulation. And again, that shouldn't be too difficult for it to use as an update. Um, so it might be just a bug with this version uh, of Kangaroo. But um, again, this is live, so you can start to work with it, right? Again, just reset, and now we have a mesh that is trying to smooth itself out. Right, based on the internal forces of these um, mesh springs. Right, so if I wanted to um, equalize the forces even more, I can pull my rest length factor all the way down to its lowest extreme, which is 0.01. All right, and then um, there's one more utility that I wanted to show here. Um, let's take a look at the. Turn off. You can see sometimes if your mouse is fluttering that you've left your timer on. So I'll block the timer so it pauses the simulation. Go to Utilities and check out the planar, Planarity Display. Right? And this allows us to um, display the mesh by analyzing its colors. So I'll turn the preview off here and here. The last thing I need is I just need to use a custom display to use the color and the mesh um, to preview it. So this is under Vector Color Custom Preview. All right. So it's going to look kind of funky when you start. Um, but the minute that you release the um, timers, you'll see that we get this kind of um, gradient of green to red. Where it's green, it's done a pretty good job of uh, equalizing all the forces throughout and becoming flat or planar. Where it's red, we're getting quads that are not planar, right? Um, so if we wanted to try and minimize that, uh, we could go back here and increase the divisions so that there is a higher resolution to our mesh before we simulate. And that should do a better job of allowing all the forces to equalize and the corresponding quads become planar. All right. Um, so uh, we'll take questions on this um, at the end. Um, one location where you can experiment would be to use um, the mesh corners instead of the naked edges and see what that gets you when you um, try and relax your mesh. And for the last exercise, um, we wanted to look at some uh, funicular shapes. So 